Tokido is out! <laughs> Finally. But still poisoned, I guess. And full of spines. Yeah. Oh yeah, and oh yeah, Kotetsu got fatally wounded, probably. But the good news is the pot demon is off on some side quest, some art side quest. So we get a little bit of time here. No. No, he got it. Or or Love Ashura. Or flashback. The power of flashback. Yeah, the, the father figure who looks like Tanjiro. One thing this season's done is suggested uh, like a long legacy of the past thing that's playing out in the present with these characters. I wonder how or just how interconnected it'll turn out to be. It's perhaps not necessary, but wouldn't surprise me at all if Tokido's father bore some relation to Tanjiro's past. Episode 8, The Mu in Muichiro. <laughs> Long flashback sequence. There are those red eyes. I don't know, father's coming back. Whoa. So in other words, Two weeks ago, given his age, I thought that in the Demon Slayer universe, joining the Demon Slaying Corps was the most dangerous occupation, but turns out the most dangerous role is parent. He must have felt so powerless, totally useless. Oh, what? Muichiro and Yuichiro, and then, I mean, he must die also. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. That seems to be the theme of season three. Oh, that's right. Muichiro Oh, so it's the brother that's the cynic. I totally get it though. And I feel like I've been there to a certain degree. That kind of cynicism is appealing. If there's some kind of huge trauma or a series of large disappointments where you believed in something or you wanted something to be true, but you ended up getting wrecked because of it. Things didn't turn out the way you wanted. There was heartbreak. That kind of disbelief in things being able to be good is not a fun place to be, but it is a great protection from major heartbreak. You know, it's kind of like a slow, dull ache instead of massive pain. If you don't believe in anything, if you think the worst of the world and people, then nothing can disappoint you. I think what's so treacherous about it though is that this kind of outlook has a way of guising itself as being purely logical and realistic. And there's like an identity that can form around that, you know, like I'm just telling things the way they are. But if the goal is actual truth, seeing things exactly as they are, then there has to be room for things that actually are good as well. No matter how terrifying it might be to believe in good things being possible or goodness in others being possible. I feel like I see this a lot with, with relationships, especially romantic relationships, where people have a negative experience or get betrayed and they kind of carry that into their, their future partnerships. Because as painful as it is to never trust someone, it's more painful to feel like you're someone who's a sucker who has been duped. And so but you have that permanent defense, you have your walls up at all times to prevent that deep stabbing pain. The sad irony of it being that some people actually are good and trustworthy and, and aren't out to backstab you. And by holding that view, you end up making it more likely that it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because you're, you're pushing people away. You are disincentivizing loyalty and disincentivizing people actually being good to you. It takes a lot more work, a lot more emotional management, but I think the goal is to be perfectly objective, you know, to get as close to the actual truth as you can, which might mean taking risks. It might mean being more vulnerable. In my opinion, this kind of coldness to people and to meaning and to goodness is just as bad as, or maybe even worse than being totally naive. He, he doesn't. He didn't. And he, this cold personality thing is an affectation. It's interesting that Weecher seems to have absorbed this personality and that this new arc is him kind of returning to form in a way, I guess because of the amnesia. His brother's just in a lot of pain. It's a very adolescent thing too, right? Like everything's terrible, everything sucks, the world is evil, even without the kind of trauma that they've experienced. Mm -hmm.
Someone shut up and changed his destiny forever. What happens to the brother? First breathing. Maybe they're all connected. They're one of the few characters so far that didn't lose their parents to demons. Look at that sword technique. <laughs> yeah, but this kind of emotional response, it's because it's, it's a threat, because he's comfortable here in this, like, nihilist hell. Oh, this is something I've been hearing for my whole life. That sucks to hear for, for him. But like, I for me, I hear like fear. I don't know. I sympathize with him. It's a shame, but... He's a kid. I, I mean, just in general, that kind of negativity, or the idea that things are impossible except for a chosen few, you can't break out of your, your position in life. Those things, they have some truth to them. It's not like it's totally wrong. There are varying levels of difficulty to one's life based on circumstance, without a doubt. But the fact that there are real difficulties notwithstanding, I believe this kind of thinking is the refuge of people who just don't see a way forward or don't see a way out. Or maybe they do, but they're also aware at some level of what it would take, not just to overcome the trials of life, but to overcome oneself, to overcome all of those intellectual and emotional obstacles because it will be painful and it will kind of force you to like sacrifice yourself, aspects of yourself that up to this point have been keeping you safe. This whole thing is sort of a microcosm of the, the Tundra outlook too, you know? Doing your best no matter what. Forced to fend for themselves at 10 and 11. How many mosquito larvae did he just drink? <gasps> Here we go. Wait, wait, wait. Is that... Who is that? I knew it was coming. It's so upsetting. That's what Yutra was saying. Some woke up. Since the beginning of amnesia as well. So much for being useless. Yeah, the hell did he do to it? If you're really lucky, you might get a sympathetic word out of him. Yeah, that was in there the whole time. Obviously, he cared a lot more than he was letting on. It's interesting that they seem to have had a role reversal. Yuichiro, in his dying moments, kind of gives up his harder exterior. Yuichiro takes it on to do what he has to do. In a way that I can't fully articulate, just feel. I think in the wake of their parents' death, Yuichiro's cold outlook was his version of caretaking. Like, return to realism. It seems to me he became kind of a leader of the two of them. Getting them through the day. You know, like, this is our reality. No one's coming to help us. We are destined for this life. And while it's a very bleak outlook, and as I said, not a fully honest outlook, it does seem like it created the emotional space or sort of a, a firm rock that Muichiro was able to rest on rather than just get lost in the, the sadness and drown in the tragedy of their, their reality. Muichiro picked a lane, you know, he picked an outlook that got him through. I wonder if Muichiro's taking on that personality in this case during his amnesia isn't something similar. <laughs> what does it really stand for? <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, he got- Whoa! Whoa, he got the scar! That's a very intriguing development. Connection to Tanjiro. First breathing. Shut up. <laughs> Save your voice. I think he's doing fine. He's engaged him in a war of art. Yeah, you lost, man. You lost. It's over. May as well just, just leave. Your artistry is just not that good, it's just time to admit it. 
Seems to be over the poison too. Flashback antidote. Right? Isn't that amazing? We're growing. The legacy. Damn. Tokido joining the party? That would be amazing. Especially once he returns to, like, nice Uichiro. We got him. Never underestimate the power of a flashback. <laughs> I don't know why that was comical. Still working. A true artist. Something Vazemon will never understand. That's what all failed artists say. He did that while being constrained? It was insane. Something tells me he'll be alright. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Oof. Oh my, I would love it if he just kills his demon right here. But no, too easy. I love this miss effect. Damn, you said you're old. Oh, he got his neck. It's close. <laughs> nice. Awesome. Right, right. That's how it feels to me too. That's how it feels to me, yeah. Oh man, this music too. Infinite strength, hell yeah. God, it feels so good to have someone this like powerful and capable. We got another, like, big-time player besides Tanjiro. Why does it feel like he just got elevated to, like, main character status? Like, he just joined the upper ranks. Turns out we haven't really been seeing his personality. We've been seeing kind of a protective shell, which, again, is totally understandable, given his role as a Hashira and also explain more with his backstory. But he's one of the more capable fighters, right? And just thematically, you imagine Tanjiro's outlook and his awakening, his coming out of his amnesia, understanding where he's coming from, elevates him to that next level of power, which was expressed so well in this episode. I mean, I don't know. It could be a little cliche, right? You have the, the flashback thing where you unlock a memory and history and gives you motivation. You become more powerful. But I feel like they did a great job with Tokido. It does feel right to me. It feels right that he's kind of let the shell crack a bit. Kind of reawakening his feelings of meaning for life and purpose. Why that would give him more, more fighting power. Why that would enable him to dispel some of the effects of the poison. Give him that kind of tunnel vision towards the goal. And take the pain. It's her birthday. Where are you? <laughs> Where is she? She's around. Thank God. Solid choices. You could do a lot worse. Western style. Wow, he gets two named episodes. Mist Hashira, Mutro, Tokido. All Tokido all the time. Then you know what? I'm okay with it. Wouldn't it be so great if he just defeats the Urn Demon by himself? I'm just imagining a fully unlocked Michiro joining the, the principal gang, you know, joining Tanjiro, Inosuke, Zenitsu. Especially with the reveal that he's got some kind of link to Tanjiro's legacy with the scar, having some connection to first breathing. If the breathing thing turns out to have a single point of origin, that would make the heroes not too different from the, the demons who are all descendants of Muzan. So it could be one of those, you know, an, an ancient battle that's been fought for generations being finalized by the, the current avatars of that battle.